Hey, it's me, it's, it's, it's man, and this is, this is what happened, the show, alright, <clears throat> let's do this, BlizzCon 2018, amongst a few uh, announcements, uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? Blizzard revealed the worst kept secret in the industry at that time. They were remastering, sorry, sorry, reforging 2002's seminal RTS blockbuster, Warcraft 3. Now, as far back as April of 2017, senior producer for classic games, Pete Stilwell, said it was an eventuality that Warcraft would get the same treatment as its 1000% less controversy played cousin, Starcraft Remastered, did that year. Not only that, after years of inactivity, the Warcraft 3 Battle.net client was getting more and more patches leading up to the announcement of the reforging, so yes, everyone knew this was going to happen. What people didn't realize is just how much love and attention Blizzard was giving this particular project. I, I, I mean, initially, let's... Let's make that distinction. Since Warcraft 3 was their first 3D polygonal game and this was their first remake of said game, it lent itself to be tinkered with far more than the 2D engine of the original Starcraft. All of the in-game cutscenes were being redone and were going to be far more cinematic, showing off the vastly improved character models, which, don't get it twisted, is a ton of work. Work, work. Almost all of the CGI cutscenes were going to be upscaled in higher resolutions, which back in 2002 were scaled down from the source resolution, and the game's intro was going to be completely reanimated from scratch as well, taking advantage of all the strides Blizzard's made in that area in 18 years, God, I'm fucking old. 18 years, Jesus Christ. Blizzard also allayed all fears, saying that the transition from the original client to Reforged would be a sm smooth one. Along with all of this, they promised improvements to the UI and the in-game graphics, a light retcon for certain characters and story elements so they'd better fit into the lore of WoW, and touted that they were going to retain all the fan-favorite features that made Warcraft 3 a fan-favorite. Then, on January 28th, 2020, Reforge was unleashed on the ravenous throngs of Blizzard fans the world over. So what happened? Okay, so it's as clear as Moonwell water that something went down during the year between its reveal versus its launch. Time, or more accurately, a lack of it. When it was first shown, you could see already that a considerable amount of work had been put in, with the remade cutscenes being the most obvious indicator. What's more is that while, yes, at the end of the day, this was, PR speak aside, a remaster of existing assets, the nature of Warcraft 3's 3D engine meant it would take significantly more time and effort than, say, StarCraft did. Regardless, 2019 passed by with little to no updates on the game and its progress up until the following BlizzCon, where only the multiplayer aspect of the game was shown or even discussed at length. The campaign was MIA, which was a stark contrast to 2018, and that was for good reason. The scope of the reforging had been significantly scaled back at some point in the year without this ever having been communicated to the fans. Thus, the, um, reception was not good. Almost immediately, the first thing people noticed was that, yes, the more cinematic cutscenes were completely gone, and instead, simply played out exactly as they did in 2002. You sick bastards. You'll never get away with it. <laughs> This change was again never publicly admitted even during BlizzCon 2019 and seemed to be some sort of dirty little secret, as every prior showing of Reforged was always focused on the multiplayer. To make matters worse, the official Reforged website featured an embedded trailer that was still using the updated cinematics over a week after the game's launch, which, as you can imagine, was noticed by literally everyone. When Blizzard finally addressed this missing feature in a letter to the fans, their explanation was thus. 
As we talked about last year at BlizzCon, we did not want the in-game cutscenes to steer too far from the original game. We went a little deeper into the thought process behind that at the show, but the main takeaway is that the campaigns tell one of the classic stories in Warcraft history, and we want to preserve the true spirit of Warcraft 3 and allow players to relive these unforgettable moments as they were. That's not true. You lied to me. At BlizzCon, they were upfront with the fact that they had decided against adding the lore and character dialogue that was going to better connect to World of Warcraft. Blizzard had stated that due to fan feedback and the sheer amount of work they are already taking on, that the added story elements were being cut. However, they never explicitly said that the revamped cutscenes were also being axed, at least in all of my research. If a Blizzard rep did state somewhere during 2019 that, yeah, all those revamped, more polished in-game cutscenes, yep, those are gone, fuck it. Yeah, I can't find a quote like that. Now, their reasoning that they wanted to preserve the spirit of the original campaign? That's fine. Why not make it an option for the player to toggle? In-game cutscenes? Classic or reforged. You already started working on it, so why not see it through? And if fans don't want new cutscenes, they could turn them off? I mean, what was the prob- Oh, right, 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 right. This then leads us into the CGI cutscenes, which, like Blizzard stated, would see the opening intro completely reanimated from the ground up, but obviously wasn't as high fidelity as some of their more recent work. What was even less high fidelity was the ending cinematic of the Undead campaign. In the 2002 release, the epic battle between Arthas and Illidan was conveyed through in-game models, but for Reforged it was done via CGI dodgy CGI. It has a distinct quality level that was a bit below anything Blizzard has done in the last kind of ever. So, okay, let me get this straight. This cutscene, this one was appropriate to change the spirit of, but not every other cutscene in the game. Okay, cool. The common consensus from fans and critics alike was that this cutscene in particular resembles something you'd see in a mobile Raid Shadow Legends is an immersive online experience with everything you'd expect from a brand new RPG title. It's got an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, just anyway. This whole issue is so odd and I just, I mean, this is Blizzard Entertainment, one of the most successful and well-known developers in the world. You should probably know the scope of your project a year before you release it. Now, those are some of the surface level things from the campaign that were immediately obvious. It doesn't end there though, as it's only the tip of the iceberg. What are some of the other things you ask? Well, here's a giant list. Custom campaigns, player profiles, cross-region play for custom games, ultra widescreen, clan support, ladders, tournament mode, original battle.net chat system, crashes, black screens, the game failing to boot, no audio bugs, progression blockers, oh, and Blizzard now owns all your custom maps and modes, especially if one of them becomes more popular than Warcraft 3 itself. Yes, when you boot up Reforged, there is a new EULA screen, which of course you must agree to if you, you know, want to play the game. While most of it is standard, players immediately notice that if they decide to make, oh, I don't know, a new Dota, Blizzard will now own your creation, your, uh, your Boda, and be able to do what they like with it. Blizzard, or Activision more likely, were probably unhappy that they missed one of the biggest gravy trains you could ever miss. Users creating content with custom tools that become massively successful, but they, Activision, can't monetize. Ah, a gold mine. We'll set up our base there. Okay, next, let's say you're all like, man, F reforged, I'll just keep playing classic Warcraft 3 on the old client, surely there's not fuck you. You cannot legally play the old 2002 version anymore, like, at all. If you own, I mean, owned the classic Warcraft 3 on the old client, you get reforged for free, but it installs itself for you, deletes the old version, and replaces it automatically. Thanks. I hate it. We're not done. While Reforged contains the Frozen Throne expansion, you can't access it right away, even though you could on the old client. You need to beat the entirety of Reign of Chaos all over again to be able to sit in Arthas's chilly icicle chair. 
Now, I get it, that kind of sucks, but what's weirder is that Reforged uses the unit and hero balance changes of Frozen Throne everywhere, even in Reign of Chaos, the vanilla release. There's no option to choose between the two, and this still happens even if you haven't unlocked the friggin' expansion. Imagine you buy a Street Fighter 2 collection that contains World Warrior, Turbo, and Super, but all three games only play like Super. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff, and that's not even all of it, but I digress. We must move on. At last, we've reached our landing site. Warchief, while you are gone, the nearby volcano erupted. This entire island has begun to sink. Now, Blizzard's initial response that came a few days after launch that I mentioned earlier was deemed as being less than satisfactory, but instead ultra unsatisfactory. Even the first sentence rubbed people the wrong way. First off, we want to say we're sorry to those of you who didn't have the experience you wanted. That implies there's some subjectiveness to the release, but when the game is straight up missing features and modes that the old version had, and this new version has the lowest recorded user Metacritic ever, that's not those of you anymore. About a week after that statement, J. Allen Brack, Blizzard CEO, you know, the guy that was fresh off his apology just a few months earlier, I am sorry, and I accept accountability. Addressed Warcraft 3 Reforged at an earnings call for Activision Blizzard. Concerning Warcraft 3 Reforged, honestly, it's been a bit of a hard week. Our community has come to expect really amazing things from us, and we've heard from them that we did not achieve that bar. But we stand behind our games and have consistently shown that not only do we support them, but we continue to build on them even after launch. And we're committed to doing that here as well. So we're going to continue to update the game and we'll continue to update the community with our plans going forward. Listen, I mean, I'm no CEO business lord, but it, it's quite the boggle as to why they release a buggy, unfinished project based on their flagship franchise as a chaser to the Hong Kong controversy, the Diablo Immortal controversy, and the Lucio O serial being garbage controversy. Mm, no... Blizzard continues their trend of disappointment. <laughs> You'd think Blizzard would have strapped permanent eggshells on their shoes for the next few months or years to avoid things like this happening. Your father ruled this land for 70 years, and you've ground it to dust in a matter of days. But then why did this happen? Well, like stated before, Reforged already had maybe a year or more sunk into it by 2018, and at least another year after that. The thing is though, is that at the end of the day, Blizzard needed to release a product to boost fiscal earnings before April of 2020. Now, remember, on this very show, in our StarCraft Ghost episode, Blizzard delayed a game for an entire console generation before shelving it. They felt it wasn't good enough and not up to their standards. Well, this business strategy wouldn't fly in a post-Activision world. When you get to brass tacks and look at the release schedule, Blizzard hasn't shipped a new game in four years. Yes, aside from the StarCraft remaster and two Switch ports, the last major game Blizzard released was Overwatch, which was like in 2016. And guess what? Blizzard's future slate of projects, Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, and Diablo Immortal, aren't even confirmed to be 2020 titles as of yet, so they needed to release something, and I present to you something. So, with no other options, Reforged was the game that clearly got the short end of the stick, or the Frostmourne, and it's really, really, really easy to imagine yourself as a fly on the wall and seeing some Activision suit going, Yeah, just get it out before the end of the fiscal year and you know, we'll patch it, it's, it's fine, it'll be fine. This reasoning is the only thing that makes sense, because I mean, Reforged the fucking state of it. There's no way Blizzard from 1998 or 2002 or 2005, anything pre-Activision, would ever release a game this unpolished. I mean, Justice League Task Force ain't great, but it's less broken. 
And all of this culminated when people attempted to refund the game en masse, which was why this was trending for a while. Trying to mitigate the damage, Blizzard denied refunds to any Battle.net account that had accrued too many hours on Reforged, which again, was probably the wrong move. After about two weeks though, this policy was then rescinded, and anyone would get an automatic refund for the game despite how many hours they clocked into it. While this was a step in the right direction, it really shouldn't have been needed in the first place. Okay, we're wrapping up here. There is one more thing I want to address though. There is absolutely no way that any of the programmers or artists or QA testers, everyone in the trenches on this project, were happy about the game launching in the state that it did. None of them looked at Reforge and said, that's good, and then took a vacation. Everyone knew this wasn't going to go over well, and yeah, it didn't go over well. That being said, those artists and programmers did not have much of a choice or any say in the matter. As of this writing, the first patch, which fixed a number of graphical, UI, and progression blocking issues, went live 11 days after the initial release. However, custom campaigns, cross-region play for those custom campaigns, clan support, ladders, and tournament mode have not yet been added, and it's unclear right now if they ever will. As for those revamped cutscenes, well, Blizzard has stated that they will not be in any future patch, and that it was a creative decision to no longer include them into the package. Now, given the fans' fervor for all things Warcraft, I'm sure Blizzard will indeed continue to support Reforged, but it's simply unbelievable that a company who were lauded for never releasing a game until it was 100% finished and polished could ever bungle such a project so completely. And it's even less clear Blizzard themselves can ever crawl out of this quagmire of poor communication, poor business decisions, and half-baked apologies, because they as a company could stand to do some reforging of their own. Ah, that wasn't pleasant, but if you know of any other monstrous tales of mismanagement, let me know in the comments below or carry some gold or wood over to the Flophouse VIP Patreon where you can officially nominate the game or movie you'd like me to tackle next. See you next time, and thanks for watching! I am intrigued. I am Thrall.